For more on this, Joe Syracuse, an author and professor of security and diplomacy at Curtin University, joins us now live from Melbourne. Professor, it's a pleasure having you on the show. Now, let me start off by asking you if you think this move by Saudi Arabia has any political motivations. Uh, good afternoon. Well, yes, it does. It's <laughs> it's mainly political. Look, this um, this drift away from the U.S. orbit didn't start yesterday or six months ago or eight months ago when the Russians attacked Ukraine. With the election of um, uh, Joe Biden, it was quite clear that the Saudis would be held accountable for the, the murder of um, Khashoggi, the journalist, mm -hmm. and that um, that uh, the United States would uh, uh, would punish them, by, particularly by withholding arms deals. I mean, uh, the Biden administration came very hard at Riyadh with human rights over foreign policy, normal foreign policy issues. Now, uh, this is just a matter of time before uh, the, the Saudis start to move in a different direction. Mm -hmm. They found the United States unreliable. They found Joe Biden unreliable. And, you know, and frankly, you can only listen to the United States lecturing you for so long. I mean, they called you Saudi Arabia a uh, pariah state and the crown prince a murderer. Right. And um, they're just not buying that, you know. It's, it's, it's a little different. Well, Biden seems, uh, Biden seems adamant right. to enforce some consequences to the kingdom, including the possibility of cutting arms sales. What do you think those consequences will look like? Do you think they would indeed cut arms sales, go as drastic as cutting arms sales, or do you think they would take baby steps into punishing the kingdom? Well, I, I think the uh, the Saudis could always turn to the outside world for arms. I mean, the United States is the world's number one arms supplier, but they, they can get arms somewhere else. And the arms that the uh, Saudis get, uh, they're mainly designed to balance Iranian interests in the region. Of course, Iran's got its own problems right now. Uh, now, I don't think there'll be small steps. I, don't, I, I think the... Uh, the Saudis are just pivoting away. I mean, they know the United States is just about done with the Middle East. They know the United States mm -hmm. is trying to pivot to, to the Pacific. Mm -hmm. And now, of course, the United States is, is, is mired in European politics as a result of the uh, Russo-Ukrainian war. So, uh, look, I, I think this is the price uh, that the Biden administration is paying for right. coming down hard on, on the Saudis. I mean, murder is an important issue, but not in foreign policy. Mm -hmm. And when you put human rights above national security interests, uh, you run into trouble. And can you think of anything dumber than picking a fight with the Saudis right. before the beginning of an energy crisis that's uh, bringing down, uh, that, that's affecting all of your allies mm -hmm. in Europe and in Asia? And, I mean, it was the wrong time. Right. And it's surely going to affect the Biden administration during midterm elections next month, isn't it? Well, yeah, I, I saw a couple of interviews today with congressmen, and they were asked the same question, whether the Saudis are doing this uh, on the moral of the uh, the midterm elections, uh, if they have a particular reason. Uh, most of the congressmen couldn't figure out if there was a particular reason. But you know what? I think the, uh, the Saudi uh, political establishment just doesn't care what the timing is. I mean, they're just taking, they're taking care of, number one, themselves, and they, they know that... Um, uh, that Biden's in for a rough ride. Keep in mind that uh, we're going to have a, a Republican House of Majority, uh, House House of Representatives very soon, mm -hmm. maybe even the Senate, and that uh, and, and 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 of course I believe that uh, that Biden will probably lose 2024. So right. in a sense, the um, the Saudis or Riyadh is dealing with a lame duck president. That is mm -hmm. somebody who only has two years. They got plenty of time. They can wait him out. Doesn't have to be Trump. It could be somebody else mm -hmm. who's far more friendly to the Saudis. But I think um, they just got tired of waiting for America right. uh, to come to their party. So I think well, they're uh, giving America a little bit of its own medicine. Right. Professor, real quickly here, we are seeing a rise in oil prices now with the production cuts, cuts with uh, which some say generates more revenue for Russia, who's using the money to fund the war in Ukraine. What, which somewhat makes the sanctions imposed on Russia ineffective, doesn't it? Well, yeah, I mean, um, I've argued on your show and in other places that sanctions only work 40 percent of the time, and sometimes they have... Uh, Unintended consequences. I do not believe that the energy sanctions against Russia have hurt the Russian war effort. That is the attempts to to pay for it. Mm -hmm. These uh, the cap on Russian oil 
It's just going to bring hardship uh, in the winter to Europe. So, you know, it's not having the, the desired effect. And keep in mind that when the United States is pursuing these sanctions, it's actually um, uh, forcing or trying to force all of its friends and allies mm -hmm. to come along uh, on the same page with them. And the Saudis weren't buying it. Only 35 right. nations in the world have lined up with the United States. So okay. there's a lot of pushback. There is indeed. Professor Joe Syracuse, it's always a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you so much for your contributions. Hey, thank you.